2022, for me at least, was a pretty good movie year. Um, there were a lot of good things that come out. Obviously, not everything was great, uh, but I do think that more often than not, when I went to the movies, I really had an enjoyable time. Uh, so it did kind of make going through my top 10 a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be, just really kind of get them narrowed down. There's some that stuck near the top almost the whole year, and I'm going to be happy to get to those. But uh, let's not waste too much time and just get into talking about my top 10 favorite movies of the year. As soon as I saw Jackass Forever, I knew it was going to be on my top 10 because I don't know if there is a movie that set out to do what it did better than that movie did. If you like these kind of movies where people are getting hurt and doing these kind of stunts, this movie is going to hit real hard for you and it's going to be good for you. If you're not into that kind of stuff, it's not going to win you over. It's not elevated at all when it comes to those types of things. Uh, but I think that when it comes to just flat out having fun with your friends, uh, Jackass Forever is just, 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 I don't, perfect. It is, it's just perfect. Like it's, it's not too mean hearted. Uh, it's not, you know, overly gross with the, the, um, sketches that they do or like this, the stunts that they do and everything. Uh, they really kind of have tamed it down a bit over the years. Like I know in some of the older jackass movies, like they're putting fish hooks in their cheeks and everything. And I have to look away. I don't think there was anything in this one that I necessarily was like too grossed out by. There's definitely gross out stuff in it. And again, this isn't the movie to win you over to that type of thing. If you're not into it, this movie is not for you. But if you are into uh, any of those jackass movies, Impractical Jokers, you know, those kind of, you know, just buddies who are doing stuff together and making each other laugh in gross out, uncomfortable ways, then this movie will be a good time for you. Don't miss out. And number nine is Barbarian, uh, one of the biggest surprises for me of the summer. I mean, I, I had heard from people that it was good and I had heard from reviews and everything that it was good, but luckily I didn't hear anything really about it in particular. And I am not going to spoil anything on this one uh, for you on that. Um, but there is a turn in this movie where there's a big shift. And when that shift happened, like in the theater was one of the most exciting moments that, uh, you know, I had experienced in a movie theater all year. Um, surprisingly funny, uh, this movie, specifically Justin Long's performance, um, just irreverent in like how awful of a, a character he is. Um, and just like kind of eating that up. Um, movie obviously has more to say than just being a flat out um, horror movie, uh, just kind of commenting on a number of different um, like political issues and everything, but it does it in a way where it's not like bashing you over the head with it, right? It's like, hey, we're using this story to illustrate um, the points we're trying to make about how bad people like this are and how these are problems. And that is, you know, I think, a good way to use filmmaking. And so, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed uh, Barbarian and some good prosthetic stuff and everything in there, too. Just Again, I don't want to spoil too much, but um, if you're into horror and you didn't catch Barbarian earlier this year, I definitely think it's not one to miss out on either. My number eight for movie of the year is Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I mean, I really did enjoy this movie. I know for quite a few people I know this one is going to be higher on the list for them. And I can understand why I've had movies like this hit for me in a way where it's just like, this is a new movie that I will always think about. But just over the year, it's kind of slipped, you know, from my memory. Um, not in a bad way. Every time I do remember it or think about it, it's like, oh, yeah, that movie was a lot of fun. And it definitely hit emotionally in ways that, I mean, it was going for talking about different family issues and, and everything like that, uh, generational issues and overcoming those types of things. Um, the action in it is a lot of fun. The science fiction you know, kind of fantasy things that they're doing. And also are just a blast to see them kind of um, going into all those different uh, universes and everything. Just very creative movie. It's, I mean, it, it's worth seeing for that alone, uh, just how creative it is. It's a bit crass at moments, but that doesn't bother me at all. I do know a couple of people who that did bother, but it didn't, doesn't bother me at all with that kind of stuff. Um, just a big heart 
um, in this movie and great performances, fantastic acting performances uh, that are just kind of rejuvenating people's careers. And so um, I think the big thing for me that kind of makes it fall down lower where I feel like it's, it's higher for some people is it does feel a little, it's a little bit long in the tooth, right? Just like I get where you're going at the end. If we can just kind of get there a little bit faster, you're, it felt like we we're kind of like we're going over the same things a, a couple of times. Maybe we didn't need to. Um, but again, it was enjoyable the whole time watching it. It's not like I was like looking at my phone being like, is this almost over? And so, again, just a great time at the movies on that one. It, that was definitely a, a fun one to go see. My number seven is Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Um, a really latecomer when it comes to um, just the year. December was stacked. There were a lot of good movies in December that I, I just watched. I was not lucky enough to go see this in theaters. I did have to wait till it came out on Netflix. And I still enjoyed it. I have seen some people saying that it wasn't as enjoyable watching it at home compared to watching it in a theater. I could definitely see where this would be a really fun movie to see in theaters when there's the big reveals to hear everybody in the theater be like, oh my gosh, is always a lot of fun. Um, luckily, I was sitting next to my wife who, in the living room, will do the same thing. Oh my gosh. And then it's almost, I don't know, something like this. It's kind of fun to be able to just openly just kind of throw out your your theories and everything with somebody without having to worry about like, oh, am I being too loud or anything? Living rooms are nice for that. Um, it's kind of a toss up on what I think would be the best way to have experienced it. Um, definitely not by yourself. I think that sitting alone watching the movie probably the least enjoyable way to watch this one, but um, I think it would play well you know, either way. Like I gave it a good review when I talked about it on my on my short. I think that Daniel Craig is fantastic in this role, and as long as he wants to make these movies. Um, and Ryan Johnson wants to to make them too. I'm like, go for it because it's just a fun character. Blanc is just, I don't know, he's smart and everything, but like he's not, I don't know, portrayed as like a perfect char character, you know, or anything. Like he very much is uh, honest about himself and uh, knows that like what he what he can do. Um, I don't know. I just really like him, and I think that the movies are clever and. Yeah, it's just a fun thing. Like, it's fun to watch a mystery, and we don't get a ton of them nowadays, at least not in theaters. These kind of, like, mysteries and everything have really moved over the last couple decades to TV and everything, and so it's it's fun to see a big one with a big budget and the big, like, cast, and so just a lot of fun. Edward Norton is getting giving a, a great performance, too. Um, don't want to spoil too much about his, but, like, his performance. I need to watch this movie again because... A second viewing with his performance, I think, would be really, really good. Um, everybody's great in this movie, though. So uh, if this one you can watch at home right now if you got Netflix. And if you don't have Netflix, it's worth getting Netflix for one month just to watch this movie, I would say. My number six is going to be The Batman. Um, I don't know. I like f It feels weird having The Batman be so low on my top ten list because... I think it's really good. I think it's like just a great different representation of the character that we haven't really gotten yet. I am kind of, I mean, I said earlier on the channel in a couple different videos that I am ready for a more lighthearted Batman. But if the Batman movies we're going to be getting are this good, I'm willing to wait. Um, I, I'm, I got no doubt in my mind that eventually like things will turn and we'll get to like that eventually will be like what people want to see. And I won't be my, by myself in that. But if we're waiting for that and the movies are this good, Robert Pattinson is, is doing this good. Um, yeah, I, I, I've got no complaints. I think Colin Farrell as the penguin is a crazy choice that ended up working fantastically. Um, the penguin's just, so far, I mean, every live action version of the Penguin has been great, right? And different. Burgess Meredith into Danny DeVito into Colin Farrell. And they're all different and they're all enjoyable. Penguin's a good character, I guess. Um, what else was in this movie? It's been a while since I've seen this one. I All year I've been saying I need to watch the Batman again. Um, but it's it was just good. Great sound design on that movie. That's something I definitely remember. I saw it in the IMAX, 
And I remember the Batmobile just blasting and just being like, whoa, that was cool. And just like feeling it. It's nice when a, a big movie really takes advantage of like those sound systems in the theaters. And so uh, that's that's pretty much what I have to say about about Batman. I'm looking forward to the like the future of this, too. I really appreciate where they leave the character. And the end of this movie is one of my favorite moments of the entire year. Um, just Batman's interactions with the city and the people in that final like montage that he's just doing stuff in, um, like on the on the rooftop of the, uh, um, what's the word? What do you call it? The oh God, stadium. That's the word I was going to say on the Coliseum, and that could paint a different picture for you if you haven't seen the movie when Batman's on the top of the Coliseum. Uh, no, when he's on the top of the stadium, um, and the lady. Spoilers, I guess. I don't know. This doesn't explain. The lady doesn't want to let go of his hand. And I'm just like, dang, Batman as a symbol of hope. That's that's great. And it's not all about him just being like what Batman is to, you know, the villains and the crooks. But it's also what Batman is to the people of Gotham City. And so I really, really liked that. And I'm really, really kind of looking forward to seeing more. My number five movie of the year is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. A very simple, small movie that, yes, is a spinoff of that weird YouTube video that you saw like 12 years ago. Um, but it's just so just sweet and nice and honest about the feelings that it's talking about. It's hitting on, again, a lot of family stuff. I'm talking about loss and growing older and not only what that means for you, but means for the people around you. Like hitting on a lot of things emotionally that you wouldn't expect the little cute shell um, movie to be hitting on. But then also in all of that, still managing to be very uh, funny and, again, character-based funny stuff. Not, um, I don't know, pop culture reference like just shoving in jokes to shove in jokes kind of stuff. Stuff that feels genuine and when you're making a like a mockumentary that's what you want anyway um nana connie uh marcel's grandma is just so good uh, as a character and i just really really loved this movie um i don't think since paddington 2 have i watched a movie that's like this pleasant and just like feels this good like not a uh, good as in quality, well made, not like that, but just like this good. And uh, Marcel is good. And uh, I think if you are ever in a, a place where you are needing to just have some more good in your life, Marcellus Shell with shoes on is definitely a good use of like ninety minutes. Number four is Top Gun Maverick, the as of right now highest grossing movie of the year. Um, again, I know people where this is number one for them, and man. If there was a reason to get back to the theater after you know, the pandemic and everything, this was it. Everybody went and saw this movie, pretty much. Um, it was just really good, right? Walked out of that movie theater, and I had no complaints about it. Great third act. I love a movie that gets me to like be clenching my fists and my like be tensing up my shoulders so much that like I have to remind myself to like just kind of loosen up because it's you know it's not real it's just it's just a movie um and, and, and top gun did that uh, and it did that by developing characters in the first two-thirds of the movie that we actually cared about uh, i don't think that that's something i think that's something that you know a lot of big action like what we would call like dumb action movies forget to do like develop characters that we actually care if they die um it's great when things explode and that can be fun to watch but when things explode and we're worried about the people that are around those explosions, um, it's always better. And Top Gun does that in spades. Um, is a smart movie to put out too. Like everybody was super gung ho about seeing it. Um, yeah, I, I remember in our theater there was a guy like four rows in front of us that was just like pumping his fist the entire opening uh, of the movie when they were playing uh, Danger Zone and. Uh, and he was just super into it. And I was super into it too. There were moments I there were moments I vocalized like and cheered in this movie. And that does not happen very often, but it did happen uh in this movie. 
And, you know, Tom Cruise just goes on to prove that, like, he's really good at what he does. And what he does is make exciting movies that people want to go see. And I, I don't know. I don't. It's weird to say, like, I want Tom Cruise to die doing a stunt, but I don't know. I can't imagine personally Tom Cruise being happier dying anywhere else than he would be during a stunt. Right. That's what I mean. Like when I say, like, I hope that he's able to die while he's doing a stunt because I feel like that's when he would be the happiest. Right. That's what I mean when I say that. And so I hope Tom Cruise gets to keep making these movies until he dies. And I hope that if he does die doing a stunt, it's very quickly. It's morbid. If I ramble in a ramble video, I'll get morbid eventually, it feels like. So there's my morbid thought for this video. <laughs> the Top Gun is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. <laughs> my number three top movie of the year uh, is Avatar The Way of Water. Um, as exciting as Top Gun was, like you like as you know into the action as I was at the end of of that movie I was for the last hour of Avatar and it's for the same reasons it really is just kind of the same things that Top Gun did not to say it did it better for me personally I liked it a little bit more I think that's because I just default to science fiction and everything a little bit more than I do just to military stuff um but yeah I really really loved the new avatar movie. I was, I was hoping it would be good because I had rewatched the first avatar this summer with the kids and was surprised because I had kind of fallen into that camp of just being an avatar, you know, hater because it was the default thing to do. Like, Oh, you know, it just, it, and it is simple and everything. The story is not like trying to do anything crazy, but here's the thing. Like if you do something simple, well, like why complain about that? Like James Cameron, no, he made these movies that have simple characters so people can identify with them. And guess what? Uh, people identify with them and go and watch the movies and really like them. I don't know. That's not bad, right? <laughs> not everything needs to be so complicated. It's okay to have good guys and bad guys. Um, and I appreciate that every once in a while. I, I, I love a great complex character. But man, give me a villain that's just a villain sometimes. And that is a lot of fun too. I really do look forward to seeing where they're going to go with the avatar stuff. I love that one of the main characters in this movie's best friend is a whale. And like, I just, oh, okay. Just like as I'm sitting in avatar, right? The way of water, there's a scene where the kid, and that's the one thing I have a hard time with the names in this movie. Luckily, like they're all made up names in a made up language. So I don't have to feel bad about not remembering people's names or anything. But so, um, there's where, <laughs> Jake Sully, I do remember his name because it's a boring name. I don't know why that's the name I remember. But anyway, so the main guy's kid is like swimming under this giant whale. And there was a moment where my brain was just like, wow, they really did a good job at uh, capturing that whale. Uh, and then the other part of my brain had to be like, uh, no, you dummy. Uh, that's not real. None of that is real. And it looks so real. And it, I don't know, it and it felt real like the whale had characterization and animation in a way where it's just like I, that's an actual character and i know what he's thinking and i know what he's feeling and i don't know i just didn't have that on my bingo card right of things that happened this year that james cameron would make me be like one of the best characters of the year in movies is a giant whale that doesn't like vocalize any lines or anything that's one of the best characters of the year but yet here we are with my number three avatar the way water it's just a lot of fun and definitely recommend going to see that one that one's still in theaters if you haven't seen avatar yet you should go see it it's great my number two top movie of the year is a movie i wish i could have seen in theaters it's rrr um i love this movie like i've i've seen this movie straight through more than any other movie this year um three full viewings of it, uh, which I know is not that many for some people, but, like, um, but three full viewings of this over three hour long movie. Um, I told everybody about it, uh, that I knew, um, during the summer. Um, if you haven't seen our, our watch RRR, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's still on Netflix and you should watch it, even though you're still watching it like in a dubbed over version, it's not dubbed over in English. And so like, it did take me about halfway through the movie to realize that people were not speaking the language that they recorded the movie in. Um, but you still get, at least to the best of my understanding, the two main, the leads, they recorded their dialogue in the Hindi 
translation of it or dubbing of it. And so I think you're at least getting their performances. Uh, anyway, this movie is fantastic. It's a musical. It's an action movie. It's a romance. It's, uh, you know, kind of like a war propaganda ish movie, right? Uh, well, not ish by the end of the movie. The very last part of the movie is definitely like, yeah, all right. This is like pro India, but like, that's cool. Like Top Gun is pro America. So it's, from india so that makes sense but anyway uh, but it plays so good and it's funny and it's sad and again the romance stuff in it plays super good it has my favorite seven seconds from a movie in the last i don't know how long there's just so much to enjoy about this movie and it the way the way the songs tie into the movie and kind of like adapt and change as everything's going on. It's just so great that by the end of it, when all the crazy stuff is happening, like you are on board, uh, at least I, I am on board and I really, I just can't recommend it enough to have people watch it. I'm not saying that you're going to think it's the best thing ever, but I think you'll like it. I, I think, <laughs> I think you will like RRR before we get to number one. Here are just a couple, uh, you know, honorable mentions, uh, I wanted to make sure to mention The Woman King. I think that as far as like a period drama that like that kind of was advertised as, sometimes you can think like, well, it's just going to be a real bummer of a movie. And this movie was not that. It was also just like a fun action movie. Weird, the Al Yankovic story. I would be uh, really letting myself down if I didn't mention that one. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's not as good as UHF, uh, but it's still really funny and it definitely captures Weird Al's uh sense of humor really, really well. It gets crazy, but not quite as crazy as I would have wanted it to get to really kind of push it up into that like top 10, but it's very, very funny. Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent has one of my favorite moments of the entire year. <laughs> Padding in two is incredible. I f***ing told you. And the rest of the movie's really funny too. And then the menu. Uh, my last honorable mention, another one where it's was really kind of advertised as like a horror movie and everything, like maybe as a horror comedy, um, but it's way funnier than I thought it was going to be. Also, it makes you hungry. Uh, nothing, no movie has maybe won a cheeseburger more than that movie since, well, let's say Good Burger, right? This year, my number one movie of the year is Nope. I loved, I love this movie. I love Jordan Peele's uh, newest horror movie. I've really liked his last two, Get Out and Us. We're both great movies. I think I'm one of the few people who probably liked us more than Get Out. Again, more science fiction-y than like crazier. So I kind of really like that. Um, I don't know, but this movie is great. Uh, I'm going to spoil just a little bit of it for you. Um, the movie pretty much turns into Jaws in the second half of it. But instead of like going after a shark, they're hunting down an alien. And it plays great. Like, I really just enjoy OJ as a character. Um, em Emerald is a character to his sister. Their interactions with each other feel so real, uh, like as that kind of uh, familial relationship would be, you know, where you put up with somebody and you really are just, like, annoyed by the different things that they do. But at the same time, like, there's no question as to your loyalty to them. Uh, and then all the alien stuff is great. And the Gordy stuff, all the stuff with the monkey um, some of the most intense stuff in the theater for me all year uh, with that. Um, I forget, I kept forgetting this is a horror movie. It doesn't feel like a horror movie to me. I guess in the same way that Jaws doesn't feel like a horror movie to me, but both of those movies for a lot of people do feel like that. But I don't know. I just didn't have Nope being Jaws again as a prediction that I had made at the beginning of the year. Uh, I was really looking forward to it and I don't know. I think it's fantastic. Um, I love it, and I loved going to the movies this year, and I look forward to sharing you know, some more of my movie thoughts with you um, as uh, the weeks go by. Um, yeah, don't forget to check out my worst of the year video I put out today as well, and so you can find that and find out the movies that you should stay away from. But uh, these were my uh, my top tens, my recommendations for people, and yeah, I'd love to hear um, your top movies of the year in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking and for subscribing and for sticking around to the end of the video if you're here. Uh, 
most people aren't most people don't stick around to the end of the video <laughs> so which is understandable i'm rambling at this point why would you be here still uh so yeah thanks bye <laughs>